Okay, we are live again. I am so sorry. Someone let me know that we got disconnected and we were having problems. So hopefully we can finish the service. This is our take two. Okay, again, we have Psalms 100 verses 1 to 3. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into his presence with singing. And know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now you can see two items that are underlined. The noise. Why would I underline noise? Whether the world is in a dark place or is having trouble, it doesn't matter. Good or bad, we are singing for him to help us in gladness and praise. And now, next, he who made us. God. We believe in Jesus Christ and have faith and trust in God. And we can try and make our snowman, but it's not the same. We are not the same. What we do is not perfect. What God does is perfect. He made many things for us to use in nature, in the world. We are built in his image. But we still praise him, continue to praise God. Okay, now I want to show you the next picture. Now, what do you see here? A very famous hat from the 1800s. A magician's hat, not quite. Someone said a magician's hat. I'm thinking of something else. Now, this hat, it's here because first, I want to tell you something. When I, myself, long ago, Back in the old college days at Gallaudet, I joined a fraternity. And one of the requirements of joining the fraternity is that we had to wear a hat like this, exact same looking hat. We had to wear it on our heads and we had to go through the campus. And why would we use a hat like that? Because we wanted to honor Abraham Lincoln. You know, Abraham Lincoln, 1863, that's the same kind of hat that he wore. And we wanted to honor Abraham Lincoln. And because he signed to make Gallaudet a college, from a college to a university, and so we want to honor Lincoln as the top, the top hat, and to honor him. Now, the word honor... We honor God with that hat because he is tops and we honor him. And you know when you have a list and we have to put God at the top of that list. He is first and foremost. Now I want to show you another verse. Now you see this verse from Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3. You 
must not. You must not worship any other gods except me. That's what God says. So this hat, it's a symbol of our honor to God. He is top. You've got the snowman at the top of him is the hat. The hat to honor God. So as you're looking out there and you see that top hat, you can think of God and honoring him. Any hat that you might put on, that hat is on top for a reason, and it means God, honoring God. Recognize that the next time you see snowmen in the yard. The word honor. The next picture. Now, what do you see in this image? What is that? A scarf. And why do I show you a scarf? To keep you warm? Warmth, maybe. And why do we have a scarf? What is the meaning of a scarf on a snowman? And it represents... God's protection and God's protected, guiding love for us. He protects us and he keeps us warm. And that's why we have the scarf. That's what that represents. Maybe some of you don't use a scarf when you're making a snowman. Does it mean that we forgot about God? No. But that does, the scarf does represent protection of God and God's love for us. The next image. Now you look at this image, and what do you see? It's simple. What is this? The twig. You look and you find twigs that might fall off from the tree. You need to find two. You stick them into the snowman, and then he's got arms. So what does the twig mean? It's a different perspective. We see the twig's hands in the snowman, but there's some meaning behind it. The twigs as arms represent and remind us of his hands and his arms outstretched, showing his love for us and his forgiveness to all of us as he outstretches his arms to us. He's always open for all of us. Jesus died on the cross with his arms outstretched to forgive us of all of our sins so those twigs honor him. It's the same idea. Maybe you've never thought about that before. God is perfect in using all these different ways to get our attention. And this one is through a snowman to wake us up through a snowman. God said, hello, I'm here. Hey, everybody, I'm over here. Look at me with his outstretched arms ready to receive us in his love. Does that change your perspective of the snowman when you go out and you're driving today or soon, the next time you see a snowman? You're going to maybe have a different thing, a different perspective, a different interpretation that's going to come to your head when you see a snowman the next time. Now, I want to get back to that first picture I showed. And Shannon saw that picture and said, there's another way that we look up to God 
as you can see in this picture, she suggests that he, the snowman is looking up to God. So I want to bring you back to that first picture because you look at all the pieces, the hat, the coal, the carrot, the scarf, the twig arms. What's missing? The buttons. But those are made of coal too or anything that you might want to use to make the buttons. But if you can find the buttons, find seven of them. And why seven? That is God's favorite number, seven. Now we look at this picture again, and maybe that's changed your perspective. You've got another look at the snowman. As God's giving his, we give his attention to God, we see the color, we honor him with the hat that we see. And now I'm going to bring the verse back. And this perspective now, that he will never leave you, he will never forsake you. you know, soon we have more and more daylight, every day. Spring's going to be here soon. And what happens to the snowman? The snowman melts away. It dissolves into nothing as the sun and spring comes. And you know, the snowman might be forgotten. The snowman's gone one day. Does that mean that your faith stops? No. When the snowman's gone and melted. God is still with us. God is always with you. He's always with us. God says we will never forsake you, even after the snowman has melted. We need to keep our faith strong in God. In physical form, the snowman may be God, gone, but God is always with us. God is always here in our time of need. God doesn't leave. God stays. The snowman leaves. And the season's done. We'll make another one again the next winter. Jesus is always with us, 24-7. And in the Bible, in Luke chapter 24, verse 50 through 53, when Jesus was leading people, he led the disciples to a town, the city of Bethany, he led the disciples out of the town and he talked to them and gave blessings to them. And then Jesus ascended into heaven. He left us and the disciples thought, oh no, he's gone. No. What did the disciples do? They carried on and they preached the gospel. They continued to preach because they knew that Jesus was still there. Jesus didn't leave. We continue to serve. The disciples continue to serve. And we continue to serve God. We help each other. We encourage each other with fellowship. So I hope that has changed your perspective and given you another look at the snowman. It's different. But now we'll go out. You might go driving. You might be looking in people's yards and you're going to see a snowman and it's going to make you think of what we talked about today and the different meanings of all the different parts of the snowman. And when the snowman melts, is that all there is? No, we keep on. We continue. Our faith continues in God because we are God's children. Now you see this cartoon, family circus again, and the kid is saying, we're all done playing outside, now we're going to play in the house. 
And the mom is saying, okay, but remember, take off your boots. We don't want all the snow getting tracked in and getting wet everywhere. And you can see he's pulling in what with the wagon? A snowman. Mm, go figure. I can't imagine how the mom feels. What would that mom do when she sees the snowman? What do you think mom would do? Just yell? Or just be like, okay, fine, I'll clean it. Or would they just hold it in? What do you think your mom would do? Okay, now the next picture. You see this? The boy is saying, Jeff is saying, there wasn't enough snow for the whole man. So what did he do? There's a bird bath, and he just put the head on top of the bird bath, and that was enough. Kids can be creative, though, right? OK, now next picture. I thought this was a cute picture. They're made out of snow, these minions. Maybe that's a good idea. Do something different for your snow art. Those guys are cute. OK. I hope you enjoyed these pictures and how they connected with the snowman this morning, but in a different way that makes you think. It keeps your mind connected. And the next time that you see the snowman, You'll think of God. Now the Lord's Prayer. You can join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the blessing for all of you today. May God go before you to guide you. May he go behind you to encourage you and with you to be a friend to you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. Now, we have our closing prayer and hope that you are forgiving and patient for our technical glitches and a little bit of our delay this morning. We pray. Our Heavenly Father, today you really tried to change our eyes and perspective and our mind to understand new perspective and new symbols honoring you. You changed our focus. You got our attention. And sometimes it's funny. I get it. We encourage everybody to whom we serve you. You have called us. With whatever skills we have, we serve you. Thank you for giving us our talent and our skills. Receive our patience and our prayers for everyone. And recently, I want to add RJ's prayer request to thank you, thank you 
for having him be cancer-free. As he has three-month checkups, he still is cancer-free. Thank you and praise you, God. That is such exciting information and to share. And Jeff wants to pray for his ex, for her health. And Bill wants to pray for all people, for all people's, whatever the health issues might be, to give them all strength. And you know, you already know what our prayer requests are. We don't need to tell you, you know this about us. And we look to you, we look up to you, and we can't have our squabbles. We honor you. You are the top hat. We praise you, rejoice you. You keep us warm with your scarf. We serve and we connect with each other because of you. We pray that you give us blessings in our interpreter and having to be able to be able to voice today so people can read captions. It's amazing what you have made possible here on earth. Many other people, you support their work and we are called by you. Keep all of us here in our community for this week's blessings and thank you for everything. All that you have touched in our lives This month of January is almost done, and now we look forward to the next month, to February. Thank you for everything. We repent from our sins. We continue on to look to you to keep us in faith and strength to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you.